It's a pleasure to be here today to tell everyone about Gem Pharma Tech. Our mission is to improve translational medicine, basically through humanization of genetically engineered mouse models. There's a disclaimer for you to read when you have extra time on your hands. One of the things that inspires some of our research and the models that we create are the tremendous advancements, <clears throat> particularly in cancer immunotherapy, from CAR T cells to antibody-derived molecules that are attacking parts of the checkpoint pathway. So why are humanized mouse models needed? Uh, one is that we want to make a better model that will recapitulate human disease and also validate therapeutics to improve that translational step from preclinical research to actually treating patients. And there are two ways to do a humanization of a mouse. You can do this genetically, for which we've done literally hundreds, where you take a human target and you replace the gene with the copy of the human gene in the mouse. The other aspect of doing this is to actually reconstitute the human immune system by engrafting these into immunocompromised mice. And I'll talk quite a bit today about the model NCG that we've developed. So let me tell you, take a step back and tell you a little bit about Jim Pharmatech. We're actually one of the leading producers and developers of genetically engineered mouse models. In fact, we have uh, the largest genetically engineered mouse model uh, R&D development in the world. We create over 6,000 new models per year, and likely we have the largest collection of genetically engineered mice ever developed by a single organization uh, with their own research team. Uh, the basic core of our technology is CRISPR-Cas9 uh, directly into mouse zygotes, although we also do ESL targeting. We also work with customers to develop their own specific models in addition to those that we've created. We have a U.S. operation which started in 2021, but the company started in Nanjing, China with my colleague and friend, uh, Professor Zhang Gao at Nanjing University. About four years ago, he spun out of the Mouse Research Institute at Nanjing University, Jim Pharmatech. In that time, they've grown to five locations in China, over a thousand employees, and as I've mentioned, have created over 17,000 genetically engineered mouse models that are available for distribution now. Uh, there's been over 20 years of experience going all the way back to the Research Institute, as well as the fact that, as I mentioned, we've created over 6,000 novel lines per year. And as you can see, we work with many premier customers, distributors, and investors. So what do we have to offer to people who need to do basic research, particularly in the biomedical area of translational medicine. We've created something which we call the Knockout All Project, where we could create a conditional knockout in the mouse gene that's ready for development using Cree lines to knock out your gene temporarily and in a tissue specific manner. We also, as I've mentioned, I'll spend most of today's talk talking about our humanization effort, where we have uh, replaced the copy of the mouse gene with a copy of the human gene or parts of it that are relevant. We also have created an entire suite of immunodeficient mice based on the NCG. And we also do customized models for customers. If we don't have something you need in your collection, we can easily create that and export that to you. So with the humanized models, We've actually gone through and looked at virtually everything that's been involved in checkpoint pathways that are potential targets of antibodies uh, within immuno-oncology and have already humanized hundreds of these. But we have also expanded into metabolic diseases and neurosciences, and our goals are quite ambitious. We'll create 600 new humanized models in 2022. So we believe we'll be the place to come to when you need a humanized mouse model that's been genetically engineered. Uh, we also can move very rapidly with the advent of the, the SARS-CoV-2 uh, outbreak. What we have done is created an entire suite of ACE2, which is the, the binding target for the virus. 
uh, using both black six and uh, valve sea mice, where we've created chimeric molecules as well as full length molecules. And these mice have been used already in a number of very important publications, in some cases making antivirals, in other cases studying the virus entry itself and infectivity. As I've mentioned, uh, we've created this suite of conditional knockouts. Our goal is to do the entire mouse genome. We have completed more than half of the mouse genome. So if you're interested in a conditional knockout, 50-50 chance we already have that live mouse or frozen sperm available to you. And we'll complete this project in the next 18 to 24 months. And this has already resulted in hundreds of publications in peer-reviewed journals. Now, we don't just create mice, but we are a one-stop shop, again, for preclinical research. We have more than 100 cell lines available, uh, over 50 human cell lines, as well as 20 murine. As I've mentioned, we are very strong into humanization. So in some cases, we take the murine tumor cell lines that we transplant, and we put in the human gene target of, you say, your antibody drug discovery program, so that we can do a syngenaic tumor model in a normal mouse, and you can use your drug of interest. And as you can see from the slide, we offer a full range of services where if you don't have the capability to do all this research in-house, we can do your entire research project. And we uh, literally do hundreds of projects per year. Again, we have a full suite of services, including uh, flow cytometry, state of the art, as well as a complete pathology service program, as well as analysis, including molecular analysis, uh, you know, single cell analysis, qPCR analysis, as well as protein. So our first foray into making uh, humanized models really was the creation of the NCG mouse, and I'll talk about that quite a bit now. Uh, this was created, uh, again, in Nanjing, and this was licensed to Charles River Lab uh, for distribution in the US and Europe in 2015. Uh, and the reason why the NCG mouse is so strong and important in research is that uh, unlike some of the earlier models, such as, of course, the basic wild type mouse or the nude mouse or NOD mouse, which are deficient in some cases T cells and slightly within uh, NK cells, the, the NCG mouse is deficient in T cells, B cells, and NK cells, which makes for better tumor engraftment. Again, these now are online, the NCG mice, as well as many of its derivatives, as well as <clears throat> in China, we offer other services where we can do engraftment of PBMCs, human stem cells, as well as do research studies. So just to tell you a bit more about the NCG mouse, just to remind you, it's severely immunodeficient. Uh, there's a knockout of the uh, DNA-dependent protein kinase, as well as the common gamma chain for the IL-2 receptor, which again, eliminates uh, most all the mature T cells, B cells, as well as NK cells. So the standard protocol is to take uh, peripheral blood stem cells, um, engraft them into NCG mice, and then transplant a tumor cell where you can then do your study. And when you do this, you can see post-engraftment, very high level and uptake of the T cells, but a slightly lower uptake of common leukocytes, <clears throat> which is why we have developed other lines that we'll talk about briefly which may engraft other components of the human immune system better. And again, <clears throat> this is just showing that the uh, human peripheral blood mononucleosides that are engrafted are ideal models for tumor studies, where you can see there's an engraftment of the tumor, and now you can see uh, some rejection of the tumor, tumor with treatment. One of the downsides of doing the peripheral blood mononuclear cells is that this leads to graft versus host disease because of the mature uh, leukocytes and lymphocytes that are in the blood. This, however, does create uh, an excellent model for graft versus host disease. And now you can see in this slide 
where we take a treatment of the mice and you can start to prevent and delay graft versus host disease. If you're interested in this disease, this now becomes another model. Now I'd like to take, tell you a little bit about doing this engraftment with human stem cells. So in this case, you need to do an irradiation of the mice to create space within the bone marrow <clears throat> for the engraftment of human stem cells. And then you can go through and do your tumor transplantation as previously discussed. And in this case, <clears throat> when you look at the survival curves, it's very clear that the human stem cells are engrafted and you no longer see graft versus host disease. So for long-term tumor studies or other long-term studies, perhaps autoimmunity or other modulation of the human immune system, using these stem cells may be ideal in your case. And again, one of these issues that I'd like to point out is that we get very strong in grappin, as you can see here on the right-hand side of human CD8 and CD4 cells, but very low NK cell engraftment. Uh, there's quite a bit of work going on with a number of companies looking at uh, the equivalent of CAR T cells, but CAR NK cells or redirecting NK cells. So in this case, this model may not be ideal. However, you can see it's a, still an ideal model for anti-tumor efficacy studies. And now you can see we're looking at Raj cells and doing lincinto treatment. So as I've mentioned, this is a very powerful model system. It is available <laughs> throughout China, and it's also available in the U.S. Uh, through our partner, Charles River Lab. But what we've done is that we've created an entire series of additional mice where we've created either transgenics or additional knockouts that will make these better models for better engraftment. So one of these that's mentioned on this slide is that we've done a human IL-15, which will pro promote the engraftment of NK cells. Those are available. We have NGX, which we're, we're able to do this without irradiation because there's a CKIT mutation. And in this case, you can now do the engraftment and get better cell development. And there's an entire list of these. I invite you to visit our website where you're, if you're interested in B cells, we also have lines that do better B-cell engraftment. And these are now all available through Jim Pharmatech. There are many other areas of immuno-oncology in which we have an interest. Uh, there are a number, including uh, CD3 targeting with biospecific antibodies, dual modulators uh, using two different targets, usually on a tumor and the part of the immune system although it can be used for other things such as autoimmunity, as well as these NK cell redirectors. Uh, a number of biospecific antibodies uh, in cancer immunotherapy have already been developed and approved for treatment. And if you can see the graph on the slide, there are a significant number of these that are actually uh, in preclinical and beyond preclinical in clinical trials. Just a brief list of some of these. As you can see, many of these incorporate CD3, but there are others such as PD-1, CTLA-4, or CTLA-4, OX-40, that are going to be dual immunomodulators, as well as I've mentioned, NK cell redirectors. However, these antibodies are highly exquisite. The vast majority of them do not bind the mouse target. So what you need for better preclinical studies, <clears throat> again, will be genetically engineered humanized mice. So this is just an example. I know it's going to be difficult to follow the slide and the data, but I'd like to say that the as a mouse that has been humanized, expressing uh, human CD3 is going to be excellent for evaluating the efficacy of your target and treating your various tumors and doing the redirect. But it's also a model for looking at toxicity because overactivation of CD3 or any other immune target can lead to a, a cytokine release or a direct against other cell types that you don't wish. And you can start to see these types of releases of uh, inflammatory cytokines, and you can now test this on these models. 
So I'd like to say that um, the other thing to do is the evaluation of these bispecific antibodies can be done by doing tumor transplantation. And again, this is an example from our uh, human ICD-3 where they've been engrafted with the tumor and go through the various treatments that are listed here. And the same is true for dual immunomodulators. We've created a, a whole suite of these, as I've mentioned, things that are in the uh, immuno-oncology pathway, whether they're checkpoint inhibitors or things that should be redirected, have been humanized at Jim Pharmatech. We literally have hundreds of these available and dozens that have been created as uh, double, and in some case, triple humanized models. So in the case of dual immunomodulator, one example here I'm showing is CTLA-4 and PD-1. You're seeing some anti-tumor efficacy studies where we're doing the transplantation of a mouse tumor uh, into a black six mouse in this case, which has both of these that have been humanized. And now we are able to put uh, on the mouse tumor cell the human copy of the PD-1 and CTLA-4 as well. And now you can do your efficacy studies uh, directly in these mice with the tumors. However, there are adverse effects, as I've mentioned, on cytokine release or other things that are potential with your molecule that is important to study. And so these mice also make very good models for this study uh, where you're looking at the immune-related adverse effects. Uh, again, uh, this is an example that's taking place in a human clinical trial using these, where you see examples of dermatitis as well as hepatitis in this case uh, with an 82-year-old man. When we take a look at this, uh, again, we uh, have a very high throughput facility. We make our genetically engineered models on both the common C57 black 6 strain and on the Balb C strain. Uh, it's our belief that the Balb C strain may be more useful in cases of looking at autoimmunity or other adverse effects. And so on this slide, you can see one example of this. In this case, we have the mouse black six background where we don't see any effect uh, on survival uh, when we're doing our treatment with either the, with, uh, the antibodies, the dual acting antibodies. However, on the Balb C background, you start to see around day 10 and very clearly by 20 and 30 that we're losing nearly half the mice uh, in the survival curve. And again, if you uh, look at the mice phenotypically for a screen, you can see um, vehicle alone. Uh, there's no effect really on, on, the, on the mice. But now when we look at the treatment with this dual lacking antibody, uh, no effect on the black six mice. The, the paws and foot pads look normal. But now you can see edema and swelling uh, in the valve C mice. And if you go and do histology, Again, you can look at uh, Balb C mice and you can start to see the effects uh, in the cardiac tissues, start to see signs of inflammation and swelling and lymphocyte infiltration, whereas the black six mice look normal. So we believe, again, we have both mice available. Uh, if you still prefer to work with uh, black six for your efficacy studies, that's fine. But if you also want to look at the uh, immune response, that may be deleterious and screen your drug compounds, we believe that the Balb C would be the better model in many cases. The Balb C seemed to have a, a higher volume and a higher density uh, within the T cell zone and the spleen, and they have a higher potential production of inflammatory cytokines and may be a better model for autoimmune disease as well as pathogen-driven immune responses. Although we realize, again, we'll be making almost everything on black six mice because that is the most common in bred mice, and you may want to use that for your studies. So some of our resources, again, as I've mentioned, uh, we've, we've humanized virtually all of the checkpoint inhibitors, and we've done this on both backgrounds, so you can select what you wish. Um, I've talked about antibody studies, but of course you can use these for small molecule studies as well. And again, we've done a number of uh, breeding or genetic engineering to create uh, single, double, and triple uh, humanized mice for studies. So again, I just like to say that um, we're, we're here to support research. Uh, we believe what we do is cutting edge and innovative. 
We are continually uh, reading the research and have over 60 PhD scientists working in our R&D department, and we're trying to create better models. However, if there are things that you need that we haven't thought of, uh, we can make these for you uh, as quickly or faster than anyone can. Uh, and we have 100% guarantee our products will work or we'll do it again. So thank you very much for your time. I enjoyed my opportunity to tell you more about Gem Pharmatech and uh, very excited to be at this conference.